Well, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. The hour is upon us. God has granted us yet again another opportunity to gather in this virtual sanctuary. Tonight, I'm so grateful that you are here. And because you are here, God is here. There's nothing that can separate us from his presence. So tonight, wherever you are, I want you to fully understand that the presence of the Lord is with you. Wherever two or three are gathered, not in space, but in spirit. Because you can be in the same room with somebody and still not be with them. But because we're on the same accord, we're with one mind, wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of us. God is not separated by the digital space. He's an all-consuming God. Wherever there is space, he's in it. <laughs> and I need to say this to you. I'm not, whatever you're in, God is in. You're not in a struggle by yourself. God is in the struggle with you. You're not in difficult circumstances or difficult situations by yourself. God is in there with you. You're not going to the doctor's office by yourself or God goes with you. You don't go to the valley by yourself. The shepherd is with you. You're not celebrating on the mountain by yourself. As a matter of fact, it is he who's lifting your hands. So whether you are in the valley, God is with you. Whether you're on the mountaintop, God is with you. If you're in between the mountain and the valley, God is with you you. He fills all spaces. He fills the space. I want to tell that to somebody before we even pray tonight, God is about to fill the space. Wherever that emptiness been in your heart, wherever there's been emptiness in that situation, God is filling the space space. I need you to believe that. I need you to believe that. I feel that in my spirit that God is filling the space. Ooh, huh? He's so much God that he's given overflow. He's not just giving a little. He's giving more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the almighty God almighty, the God of multiplications. He's not just giving you one plus one, but he's giving you five times five. God is sending overflow in whatever area where there seems to be lack in your life. God cannot walk into a space where there's lack and not fill it. Oh, you need to hear that tonight. I didn't plan on going on this. I'm going to get to the prayer. We're going to pray and get to the text. But wherever there's an emptiness or where there's lack, anytime God steps into that arena, if there's only two fish and five loaves, if there was a lack, it wasn't enough for the people who were there. So God filled up the lack. And watch this. There was 12 baskets left running over because God, when he fills a space, there's not enough to contain him. Good God Almighty, help me tonight. Um, space can't contain him. Ooh, my God, let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight that we are here. And because we are here, you give, we give you all of the glory. God, we give you all of the praise. Uh, we pray tonight that you be glorified in this moment and that all your saints will be edified. Let your word stretch us now, O Lord, from center to circumference. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Welcome back again to our Thursday night Bible study. We're in our series that's entitled Word Factory. Word Factory. Last week we left off on our theme of tongue traps. Tongue traps. And we're going to pick back up on that tonight, um, if you will. Um, give a quick recap. Um, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. Um, King James, um, King James, um, I, 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 I like King James because that's what I, I grew up off of King James and it's, it's so rich in language is it helps us to remember the King James language It's very rich in, in language and, um, very poetic, if you will. Uh, Proverbs six and two says, um, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. 
the common English version says, um, you have been snared by the words of your mouth, trapped <laughs> by the words from your mouth. Wow. You have been snared by the words of your mouth. You've been trapped by the words that come from your mouth. Notice the difference there. You've been snared from words of or by the words of your mouth. You've been trapped by the words from. So we got of and from. You carry words in your mouth. Ooh. And what you carry has the ability to trap you. Come on, talk to me tonight. As a matter of fact, words start wars. Words create love, but it also can choke love. Now, love makes people cry, it brings joy, it brings tears. Love, which is backed up by words. Words cause men and women to willingly risk their lives, risk their fortune, and to risk their honor. Roy Williams goes on to say that our world as we know it revolves on the power of words words have power words of your mouth and words from your mouth and so last week we talked about the enemy wants to trap you with conversations he wants to get you bogged down into a conversation so he can get a grip a stronghold on you based off your conversation and so it's not okay to enter into every conversation. Every conversation is not for you, and you're not for every conversation. And the enemy uses different tactics to get us to trap, or an attempt to get you or us to trap ourselves or with our mouths. Um, we read last week, or we, we spoke last week about two of those mechanisms he used. Murmuring is a mechanism that the, 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 the enemy uses. Um, um, the whole congregation out in Egypt or out of Egypt who was in the wilderness they murmured against God not only that they complained against God and God took it personal and it caused them to forfeit the promises that God had personally given to them I want to pick up on the third thing that we didn't get a chance to discuss we're gonna jump into that right now um, the third the vice that the enemy used is gossiping. Ooh, gossiping, gossiping, gossiping. I, I, don't, I don't even know where to start right there. Um, gossiper um, and it, it, it's considered to be a whisper or a tail bear. This is what the Bible uh, often refers to a gossip as a tail bear. As a matter of fact, the Hebrew, there are several Hebrew words. Well, one of the Hebrew words for gossipers is um, Raquel. Um, which which means someone who slanders, watch this, uh, and someone who is a talebearer and informer. So wait a minute. If I am an informer, that means I'm working for an agency. I'm informing headquarters um, about something that is going on and so informers they camouflage their ways oh this is good tonight they camouflage their ways into environments and into relationships in order to draw or to extract information from the relationships to take it back to headquarters follow me so when we're dealing with the device of gossiping it is working for the headquarters of uh, the main one slander that exists, that is Beelzebub, that is Satan himself. Um, and so as an informer of uh, Beelzebub, for the agency of Beelzebub, uh, tail bears, gossipers, um, go and infiltrate relationships only to get information, watch this, <laughs> Um, to do what the second Hebrew word says, the Tabari is, which is a Nargon. And a Nargon is a mummerer, whisperer, or a chatterer. 
Watch this. So the informer gets information for infiltrating relationships in order to go and chatter with other people. To to and and, and it's that's not a one time things. It is an habitual thing. You can't be defined as a gossiper if it's not something that you don't do consistently. There's not a pass for gossiping. Um, you 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 you're not a baseball player because you threw one ball. You're not a singer because you sung one time. Um, gossipers are, 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 the device of gossiping is habitually revealing personal stuff about an individual, watch this, in order to get sensation from other folks. Ooh, um, they, 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 gossipers reveal sensational information in order to get sensational reactions from other people. Gossiping is driven by entertainment. Wow. I'll slow down. Man. And so, um, Proverbs 11 and 3. Proverbs 11 and 3. Um, Proverbs 11 and, not 11 and 3, excuse me, 11 and 13 says, A tale bearer, an informer, a chatterer. <laughs> reveals secrets. So in a former, a chatterer, a tear bearer, gathers information in order to reveal information. But he that is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. You see the difference there? Uh, the difference here, and we're talking about tongue traps. The difference is um, a person who's operating on the operating um, or been bit by the gossiping spirit um, gathers information to reveal it for entertainment purposes for sensational purposes not for the purposes of helping build or strengthen in the, in the individual or to help somebody come out of whatever they in. they get it for the sole purposes of entertainment watch this and for slandering whoever they're talking about. But the person who is faithful, they conceal, or the faithful spirit, conceal the whole matter. Whew. And so, as believers, we ought to not voluntarily be in other people's business. Here's why. Because sometimes, Sometimes knowing too much unnecessary information or some unnecessary things about other people causes us to become Monday, Monday couch coaches. What I mean, huh? we become commentators Ooh, about other people's lives. And it amazes me how people have feel they have the right to be commentators on other people's lives. Um, Rather than commentating about our own lives. And so we got to be careful about allowing people to spill unnecessary information into our spirit. Because then we become commentators. Uh, and by default we become informers. And we become chiller tatters uh, when we know unnecessary information. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff that people watch on TV, reality shows, is built around gossiping. It's built around informers. It's built to entertain you. And while entertaining uh, may be sensational, it is slandering and very dangerous to the persons who are involved in such activity. Hmm. And so, um, One of the ways we can tell whether the gossiping conversation is about to start. Here it is. Um, did you hear? <laughs> I, I want to talk some practical things to you. Um, or let me tell you something I just learned. Or did you hear about? If it's not necessary for me, is it going to help me to grow? Is it is, is my service needed to assist somebody else? Um, is it going to help me to know more about God? Is it going to speak highly of somebody? If it's not doing that, why do I need to hear about it? Or why do it? Why is it necessary that I know? But because 
after you've been struck with the gossip and bite, what follows that is backbiting. Oh, somebody say backbiting. No. So we've gone from an informer, chatter, chitter chatter, now to backbiting. Um, the Hebrew word uh, for backbiting is um, sather, 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 uh, which meaning secrecy of the tongue being slanderous. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's slandering that's done in secret. <laughs> it's, 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 it's backbiting is, is saying spiteful things about someone that is not presently, who's not present. You're doing it behind the back. It is done in secrecy. While one day they can smile in your face, but when they're not in your face, they are secretly backbiting or slandering your name. Proverbs, not Proverbs, Psalm 15, 1 through 3 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth or doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. No one who likes to walk in the room, uh, no one likes to walk into a room. Watch this. And the people stop talking. Oh, help me, God. Huh? When you walk into the room and the people stop talking, it's only a sign uh, that you have this word uh, present to me. Ooh, Sather. Sather. Um, you got backbiting there. Because when you walked in the room, if the conversation wasn't about you, the conversation wouldn't have stopped. Or if the conversation wouldn't have been offensive to you, it wouldn't have stopped. Backbiting. Because usually when you are when you are the topic of the conversation, you walk into the space, the conversation stops. Wow. In in the awkwardness of the moment. To catch people in that moment. I'm trying to keep keep us from stepping into tongue traps. Because the enemy will try to lure you into conversation. You came into the room not with the intent to discuss anybody, but the enemy was sitting there with, with someone who had been struck in with the spirit of backbiting, and now they'll drag you into a conversation. Drag you behind the back into the conversation. And what as a believer, what you ought to do is that's what you feel. Well, let's go and take this to her. Let's go and take that to him. Because the Bible tells us if you got an alt against your brother, you got alt against your sister, go to your sister or your brother and privately. Watch that. Look what the scripture say. Go to them in private. Don't talk about them privately, but go to them privately. Oh, uh, I hope you're with me tonight. Um... The next thing we have, or the tongue trap the enemy use, um, is evil speaking. The Greek word here for evil speaker is blasphemia. <laughs> blasphemy, where we get our word blasphemia, uh, which means slandering. It means detraction. Ooh, huh? Damaging someone's reputation. Ooh, it, it, it means to be injurious or, or to have injurious speech uh, to another's good name. That you're making my name look bad. You're making somebody's name look bad. Um, it means to, to speak with reproach towards someone else. Ephesians 4 and 31 says this to us. It says, um, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So then, Ephesians tells us we should never use our tongues to say anything evil or blasphemous about God or about others. And see, um, we know don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The text is teaching us you can blaspheme other people. To speak evil of other people is blasphemous. And so while we may have not blasphemed the Holy Spirit, we have been blasphemous towards other 
people. Wow. We haven't guarded our hearts and our tongues uh, and our mouths, and we have become blasphemous towards other people. Psalms 39 and 11 um, says, I said I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. What do you mean? Um, Cause wicked conversations are, are, are people who are been bitten by the wicked bug, been bitten by backbiting, been bitten by evil speaking, been bitten by murmuring and complaining, have the tendency to try to draw you into the trap. The psalmist say here, thirty nine verse one says, "I will guard my ways, lest I sin, not with my hands, but with my tongue." I will restrain my mouth with a muscle. Ooh, huh? That's strong language that I know my mouth have the tendency or the itch to be able to begin to speak uh, with what the wicked is saying. So I have to muzzle myself huh? so I won't open my mouth. What did Proverbs 6 and 2 said? You are snared by the words of your mouth. Huh? You are trapped by the words of from your mouth um, and so this psalm is saying uh, that my mouth are so strong and it is difficult to control uh, then I have to put a muzzle on that which I can't control uh, I got a, a text for you James uh, let's go to James right quick and um, from there we uh, time is almost upon us and I'm so grateful for your time that you're here uh, with us on this evening James chapter 3. Um, I'm at verse um, 6. Common English verse. It says. No, verse 5. It says, so too, though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts great things. Consider how a small fire sets ablaze a large fire forest and the tongue is a fire the tongue a world of unrighteousness is placed among our members it stains the whole body sets the course of life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell every kind of animal bird reptile and fish is tamed and has been tamed by humankind but no one can tame the tongue. Woo. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison with the tongue. You, you, you see this? The, the psalmist just said um, in Psalm 39 and 1, and they had to put a muzzle over his mouth, over his tongue, uh, while he's in the wicked presence because the wicked would jar it out of him. That, 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 that some people have the ability to draw things out of you to get you into the trap. Verse 9 says, but with the tongue, we bless our Lord and Father. We sing hallelujah. We sing glory. We sing praises. And with the same tongue, curse people who are made in God's likeness. Now, now let, let me say this about curse because it's not cussing somebody out. No, this is not a permission for you to cuss somebody out. Um, it says cursing. That, 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 that we curse people. What is a curse? A curse is to speak evil towards somebody. It is to wish evil on somebody. And only people I know who speak curses are witches and warlocks. Ooh. Tongue traps. I know this is a different Bible. It's a difficult Bible study. I, I, I don't want us to be trapped. And so to, to, to wish somebody evil is to curse somebody. You remember God says to Abraham, uh, I'm going to bless those who bless you. And I'm going to curse those who curse you. In other words, God was saying to Abraham, those who bless you, do well towards you, I'm going to do well towards them. And those who speak evil towards you, Abraham, I'm going to make it happen to them uh, what they wanted to happen to you. It's not cussing somebody out and telling them they mind. It's cursing to, to speak evil of someone, to, 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 to wish somebody um, evil. Um, Verse verse 10 says, Blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce others? My brothers and sisters, 
or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a saltwater spring yield fresh water. Ooh. The tongue. The power of the tongue. Don't be ensnared by your words. Don't be trapped from the words that come out of your mouth. And I wanted to get through this part too to, to, to tonight. Um, if you give me one more moment, I got one more uh, to give to you. Um, Evil speaking. Um, this is the final one that we're going to be done. Outburst of laugh. It's a trap the enemy used because when people are angry, they speak differently. Watch this. Um, outbursts of wrath are sudden speech. It's violent speech or it's violent feelings. And anger, somebody say, I'm ticked off. I'm, 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 I'm heated. And what anger does, it produces wrath. And, and, and wrath um, is demonstrated in punishment. Colossians 3 and 8 says, But now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheme, filthy communication out of your mouth. Notice the translation. Let, let, let me read it to you in the, in, in, um, the Cummins English version. Notice the, the transitioning of how it builds. Um, it goes to all these things that preempt communication coming out of your mouth. Here it goes again. Colossians 3 and 8 says, But now but now, put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. Last series we were saying that we were talking about that a few series ago um, about changing your clothes. Um, he said you, you got to change the way that you talk. And so I got to be very clear here tonight before we conclude. Um, got to be very clear about our words because how we use our words can be sin. Why? Because sin always takes from you. Sin always make you make you uh, uh, always make you or uh, separate you from the will and the righteousness of God and so people get into mess because of their mouths because of their words they get into trouble because of their tongues and so the psalmist said I put a muzzle over my mouth saying what I should not say it happens in friendships, it happens in marriage, it happens at churches, it happens at work, it happens in families, it happens in public arenas and public spaces. I'm speaking right now, they have the debates going on for the president. And watch the words that are being used. And people are using harmful words to get to, to, to sensationalize the audience. They are slandering other people to make themselves look good. And God gets no glory. God ain't in that. God is not in that. God is not in any kind of slandering. He's not in it. So we got to make sure we don't yield our tongue to the enemy. We can't give the enemy our mouths. You need to keep your mouth. You're going to need your mouth for your own purpose to, to speak blessings and not cursing over a situation. The Bible says, be ye angry and do what? Sin not. Because many people are ruled by their emotions. How they feel depicts how they speak. And so when they are moved by their emotions, people then become the target ooh, uh, of their mouths. And so the devil uh, brings about these issues in order for you to use your tongue as a weapon. He gets you in your emotions and tell you you ought to be upset, you ought to be angry, you ought to feel some type of way. And now he's lured you into the trap, the tongue trap, to put your mouth on somebody. Woo. I got to get out of here for the sake of time. I hope you've been blessed by watching the traps of the enemy, tongue traps. He wants to trap you in your conversation. 
It might sound cute right now. It might be funny right now, but it's not funny because the enemy is trying to snatch your soul away. He's an enemy of your soul. He's trying to snatch you away from God. Because when you talk the way that he wants to talk, you manifest. Remember last week we talked about your tongue is so powerful that whatever you speak, you manifest. You manifest that which you speak. He wants you to manifest this stuff. He can't bring evil into into to, 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 to reality unless you manifest it yourself. So he drops the seed in your mouth to get you to speak it. For you've been created in God's image. God made you just like you create with words. I got to get out of here. Uh, listen, thank you for your time tonight. I'm praying for you that you come into a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to remove beyond just confessing, but being a true disciple. He said, go out into the world and make disciples. Discipleship is commitment, is sacrifice. It is taking up your cross and walking with him. It's more than conversation, it's action. We're looking for disciples. Won't you allow the ministry to disciple you? You can confess him now, but you need to be disciple too. If you never confess him, say, Jesus, save me. He said, whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's just simply say, Jesus, save me from my sins and become both Lord and Savior of my life. Live in me, Jesus, from this day forth. Now commit yourself to discipleship and watch the fruit of the Holy Spirit grow inside of you. I'm going to ask you to consider returning tithe, giving an offering tonight, sowing the seed, becoming the partner of the ministry. To help us go into the highways and the byways to compel men and women to come to Christ. Listen, God will make happen for your house what you make happen for his house. Brothers and sisters, we're out of time, but never out of grace. It's my hope and prayer as we leave this place, but never God of grace. That the Lord will bless you and keep you. That his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord will lift his counsel upon you, give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And remember that I love you to life.